Hello everyone and welcome to the unboxing of one of the fastest and most innovative ways to get around. Uh, if you're watching this and you're looking for a more efficient, more interesting way to get around the city, you're not going to want to miss this. So underneath this sheet is one of the most highly anticipated and controversial wheels of all time. This is, of course, the InMotion V13 Challenger. So, uh, with my holy pocket knife, this is my ceremonial pocket knife. Get right in here. Disclaimer. While I cannot recommend the V13 Challenger to everyone, in fact, there's very few people I could recommend this wheel to, I did want to take this opportunity to highlight some of the strengths of the electric unicycle and why you should buy one. You know, there's a wheel out there for everybody. There's a, there's a, there's a size and there's a wheel out there for everyone. Oh God, I think, I think what this wheel represents to me is more of a commitment to the e-wheel and a sort of glimpse into the future of where these things are headed. It's, it's the R&D and it's the focus on the safety and, and the, the motive, the motive behind it. Okay, that's why. Call me crazy, but I bought one of these. Huge, huge, huge shout out to E-Wheels. I did purchase this with my own monies, but I, I did work out a small content deal with Jason at E-Wheels. And so, you know, thank you, Jason. I, I hope to make a lot more content for you guys in the future. Uh, here we go, folks. This is, man. I can't believe it's actually happening. It, it almost seems like a fantasy. Like my friends were like, is the V13 in the room with you right now, Cameron? User manual, right? V13 checklist, shock pump, shock stuff, charger. Big boy, big boy, what do we got? Five amps, 126 volt. Inside, we have what I believe to be the pinnacle of hardware and software for EUC. <sighs> the in motion v13 challenger y'all uh what do we got we got some foam foam chonk another foam chonk Ooh, heavy wheel oh dude <sighs> dude <laughs> okay this is impressive in person wow you guys, oh my goodness, oh my gracious. Oh, flippy floppy, floopy floopy. Wow, that tire's huge. Big boy, big boy. Oh. Yo, let's bring you a little bit closer here. A little bit closer in on the action. Wow. Mr. Chonk, can you please come down to the reception desk? That is... That is chonky. Then we got this reinforced rim. Super excited. It feels like seriously a single unit. Like this entire thing feels like a single freaking piece. Amazing, amazing. First initial impressions on, on quality are just phenomenal. All right, let's talk a little bit more about this wheel. <laughs> All right, getting on the V13 Challenger, everybody. So what really sets this wheel apart from a lot of uh, what, what you see elsewhere on the market is it's really, got a, a lot of attention to safety and it's got durability 
Uh, it's got quality and, you know, the touch screen and the lights and a huge tire, the biggest tire, and a crash protection system too. Built in day one crash protection system and a flurry of temperature sensors, like temperature sensor in the motor even. This has the largest motor of its kind, a 4,500 watt high speed tuned motor. So, uh, you know, the power band on this thing kind of like starts at 30 miles an hour or so. And sorry, I'm just trying to pick up speed here a little bit. Uh, yeah, this thing is just built for speed. What can I say? Everything about this wheel, like Kuji Roll said, is, is built to make you go incredibly fast. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, I really do like this thing a lot. Uh, you know, it has the Raptor controller, which is just leagues above in terms of the modular design and and the uh, the overhead capacity of the Raptor controller is just insane. And the the 42 MOSFETs, you know, ensure. You have absolutely plenty of power. You know, all the copper in this thing, uh, you know, tons of copper. I know that this is supposed to be like a relatively difficult wheel to like get used to and stuff, but uh, really it's quite manageable actually. All right, let's see. All right, 46. Let's see, let's get up here. And that's 50. Fifty-three, and there's dynamic tilt back, and then you really have to push. Uh, okay, I should probably cool it. One thing I will say is that 50 on this wheel feels slower than 50 on my master, and that's all you know. Relative the the wheel you're on, the machine you're on, uh, kind of determines your relative, uh, you know, speed feel. It's kind of like the weather. It's like the temperature and then the real feel, right? Or whatever it's called. Yow! But yeah, this thing is a sender. Make no mistake. Make absolutely no mistake about this wheel. It is a sender. Yeah. A lot of controversy about this wheel, but I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, it kind of feels like the closest I've ever been to uh, motorcycle territory. Hi, Max Train. Ultimately, the way this thing rides and the way it's tuned, uh, the power band is so different. And that's, you know, that's what gets me on these machines is I love the juxtaposition. I love the difference between this brand and that brand and, and what they're doing, how it feels. And this thing is just so different, you know, compared to the brutalist, simplistic is best approach uh, that Bagode has, you know. This is like technological, took time to refine, hot tech of the day. This is a lot more value for your dollar like straight up just the manufacturing and components involved in this wheel is more expensive you're probably getting like more for your dollar even though it's more expensive if if that makes sense the value is high the value is high yeah let's go ahead and let's take a stop up here near the bridges and we'll talk about innovations behind electric unicycles shall we Yes, we shall. So, 
All electric unicycles are extremely capable for their size. They are low maintenance, they are fun to ride, and ultimately they are close to a real electric vehicle. Dog was very, very excited over there. So it almost seems, you know, too good to be true uh, that these things are an excellent commuter. Uh, they also are a ton of fun for recreation. And also they're incredibly utilitarian. And then you start to question, okay, well, what are some of the concerns? So let's go over some of the major concerns with uh, owning one of these electric unicycles. Yeah, let's go. So let's address some of the common concerns. I think the number one is safety. Am I going to you know, fall on my face? When it comes to safety, yeah, this is applicable to really any other sport or bicycles even. I would, I would treat it with the same sort of respect as like a high speed bicycle, you know, gear up. These are a little bit faster, so gear up better. When it comes to safety, you know, uh, I think that these are at a point where they are the safest they've ever been. And something like this, which has plenty of power and really is trying its very best to not let you destroy your face. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but you are going to fall. Cool. All right. Let's talk about another concern. Here we go. Pew. You know, I was gonna leave the cherry blossoms, but they are just way too nice. So another really common concern with these electric unicycles is the learning curve. You know, how, how long does it take to, to learn one of these? Uh, you know, steering, turning, all that stuff, accelerating, braking, and it it's, it's steep, you know? It's a really steep learning curve, uh, but as soon as you get over the crest, you've got it. Uh, it's one of those things where it clicks just like a bicycle. Um, and for different people, that takes different amount, amounts of time. I've seen people jump on it and learn it in five minutes. I've seen people take weeks, months. And so for people who are interested in these things as, as a legitimate alternative to transportation, just know that it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to and you should probably buy a beater wheel instead of something like this. This is not a beginner wheel. Yeah, when it comes to the learning curve, you gotta be prepared, but I really do think that it is worth it. It is, it is more worth it than anything else I've ever learned. So check out the cherry blossoms. Okay, let's keep going. Squirrel! Oh my God! Oh my God! All right. Now, we come on to, you know, maintenance on these PEVs, EUCs especially, uh, is, is really what I know. Uh, oh, this, this, this I can go. Just like any other vehicle, you're gonna have, you know, maintenance tires, stuff like that. You're gonna maybe bend, bend a rim or you're gonna have a battery or something that goes out or whatever. And, uh, thing is, uh, you know, there's a lot of different dealers and stuff that can do that. If you're really good with DIY stuff and kind of taking things apart, then you will absolutely fit right into the hobby because you can just buy, uh, you can just buy the parts and, and yeah, fix it all yourself. Uh, and so, You know, the, that's part of the fun is actually like the modding and, and whatnot. Um, but the maintenance is so much lower compared to, you know, the cost of, of running one of these is, is incredib 
incredibly efficient. Like, I, I think this just may be the most efficient way to get around. And uh, I did some math. I did some maths and some chat GPTs. And uh, turns out in like the worst case scenario, riding one of these things around is like five times more efficient than a Tesla Model 3. So take that, Elon Musk. Yeah, the cost of ownership, these things kind of pay them, themselves off. Uh, even this thing, the hyper wheel that's, you know, controversially expensive. Um, with specifications that, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe a, a smaller wheel has more range, but, you know, the, this thing is interesting. It is a very interesting wheel and it's got uh, some gnarly, gnarly electronics in it that just make, you know, make me happy. The electronics make me happy. Just, just thinking about like 42 MOSFETs all firing up just on three phases. Just, ooh, yeah. So, gosh, I hope I've convinced if anybody are, of you are new to this, you know, of some of the, the I just want to push you over the edge, you know, go get one. Maybe don't get this one. But for anybody who is looking at this thing, I'm, I'm happy with it. But I like my V12 too. So, you know, there's bias there that you got to understand. I put like 7,500 miles on my V12, so. I, I do like emotion. I do like that they listen to the feedback of the community. I like that Bob is, uh, the CEO is involved in, in um, feedback, just, just feedback in general. That's what I'm interested in. Oh, okay. Wow. We made it, y'all.